the Messiah. Fixing, fixing, you know, I'll do that for you. Uh, what you need, you know, what you want me to do is take that. Hey, man, I can put some crown molding on that thing, work that thing out for you beautifully, man. And they probably was walking around, man, I'm telling you, man, the best carpenter in town, that boy Jesus is off the hook. <laughs> right? But, but no one was saying, man, eventually, man, he's going to save us all. When he, when, when he manifested, because this happens, you know how, look, look, because even with Jesus, as he was growing in covert, he was, uh, he was still designing purpose with stuff, and every once in a while, purpose would leak out. Like when he was in the temple, and the parents left him, he in the temple breaking it down. He's like, no, check this out, John, such a, and, 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 and all of us, the Pharisees and the Sadducees looking at him like, how does boy know this stuff? He's like, no, no, that's not exactly what that means. What that means is, and the parents came back like, uh, Jesus, we've been looking at you for three days. He's like, hey, don't you know about my father's business? Oh, uh, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> and then it said he was obedient all the way up until it was time for him to manifest. You ain't seen no more sightings. Now, the interesting thing about that is, that sounds crazy, but you deal with it all the time. Greatness be slipping out of you. You be like, oh, I don't know where that came from. No, I was just playing. I was just playing. I was just playing. I don't, I see that. No one's ever done that. And I know it's something that no one's ever seen, but I think I'll just keep that to myself because that sounds crazy to you. And since I'm not credible enough to express that, I'll keep it to myself. Oh, no, no, no. You're credible. That's right. It's in you. It's just a time for it. Sometimes we do things out of time and out of season. We get out ahead of God. Wasn't we talking about that? We was driving the other day. How... You know, a lot of times people tell you when they think you should do stuff just because it's shiny. But you can't, you, you can't do stuff when it's shiny. I mean, uh, I came out here, uh, we came out here, I apologize, we, I can come out here by myself. Uh, we came out here October 2010. Actually, we left off our, our, our last church at, uh, on uh, 10, 10, 10 at the 10 a.m. service. And actually, we started the first, the first service here 10 months after that. Right. But the interesting thing is, is people were talking, was talking to me and talking to me about pastoring years before that. Now, God told me I was called the pastor in 1994. I didn't talk to the pastor that I was under until 1999, five years later. Some people probably jump right on it. But I was like, I'm playing basketball right now. Ain't nobody trying to, <laughs> nobody here balling. You know, I was, you know, I was putting up shots. I wasn't, you know, I was like, well, this is what God, I, I almost said it like, well, God told me I'm, I'm a pastor. Got any instructions? It was like a 30 second conversation. That's a whole other story. Um, but time just kept going by, but I wasn't doing nothing. I wasn't like trying to get jobs at churches. You know, because I was like, well, was, I'll just keep learning what I'm supposed to learn. I, I, the scripture says in 1 Corinthians uh, 7, uh, I believe it's verses 14 through 20, I believe. I could be wrong, but I'm close. It's in 1 Corinthians 7, I know that. It says, when you're called to buy faith for where you are. So even if God called me and I was working at McDonald's, I don't quit McDonald's. I'm just going to remain faithful in doing what I'm doing at McDonald's. Because the scripture says in 1 Thessalonians 5, he, he that called you will also do it. Philippians 2 says, he'll work in you the willing to do his good pleasure. Philippians 1 says, be confident in this very thing that he's going to do work and you will perform it. So all I got to do is yield. I don't have to hustle. Because Psalm 75 says promotion comes from God. Not from the east or the west or the south. Look up. It comes from God. See, so once I know that, all I got to do is just do what God tells me to do. So here, 16 years after God told me, is when, God, when things started moving. See, it was covert for his time. People come up to me, and when you start your church, I'm like, hey man, did you see the game last night? Aim was off the hook, wasn't it? Oh, uh, you played too much, Mr. Brady. When you start this church, man, right now I'm serving somebody else's church. That's right. Somebody else go, man, you brainwashed, man. You get played. Might be getting played, but right now I'm going to stay with God. I'm not trying to be behind him, but I'm sure ain't trying to get ahead of him. Because if I'm going to do, I, I, this is what I've told people. I said, you know what? I said, everybody's so in a rush to go out there and, and pastor or do whatever. I said, but you know what? I've been sitting under the word. Five days, one time was like five days a week. Remember? Like five, well, I was throwing a few meetings. Well, it was five for me. You know what I'm saying? You know, it was uh, 
two, two services on Sunday, two on Wednesday, one on Friday, and then all the other stuff that I had to do. So I, I'm under this word. I'm just like, well, when I go on my own, I'm responsible for people's word. I said, I ain't in no rush <laughs> to be getting out there on my own. And God ain't going to be there. I need to know God's will. I don't need to know I can do it. He told me I can do it. I need to know I'm prepared to handle it. And only God can tell me that. Because the scripture says you're on the tutors of government to the appointed time of the Father. So when he gives me the appointment, I'm ready. Not when everybody else say I'm ready. So I stay covert behind the scenes. I won't check in the hidden years. I won't get excited because somebody else is doing it and I know I can do it. I won't even check because I don't know what the heck they're doing, but I can do it better than that. I go, I still, I still got to do it in God's timing. Because when I do it in God's timing, I'm confident because he's doing it. All I got to do is yield. Because when I bind stuff on earth, it'll be bound in heaven, backed up by heaven. When I lose stuff on earth, it'll be loose, backed up by heaven. Why? Because I've been released by heaven. But I ain't being released by heaven if I'm not thinking about heaven, not focused on heaven, not mindful of heaven, not even connecting with heaven. It's not even a consideration. I put myself out there. And, and we all have done it. You put yourself out there, how's it work? Right. How'd that work out? To be out there without God. You were shining there for a couple of years, wasn't you? Bling! How's it looking now? Yeah. All right, so, and that's all of us. I've done it too. I mean, I didn't say no names. Y'all get all sensitive in here. I didn't say no names. We all... <laughs> Are you trying to say I was wrong for jumping out when I was shiny? Because I was wrong when I jumped out when I was shiny. Because I, I I polished myself up. God didn't put His brightness wasn't coming through me. That's the difference. All right? All right. Because I uh, don't know where I was supposed to start now. Because that wasn't planned. Okay, let me see. Um, see, seasons of isolation, you're learning behind the scenes. And, and there's something, I remember I, I worked with the Ohio State University football team. And uh, one of the guys comes, he's a linebacker, uh, he's a freshman, comes into Bible study and he says, he says, he says, uh, he said, Keith, man, uh, man, I just messed up today. I was like, what are you talking about? He says, man, I was terrible today. I said, oh, great. Fantastic. He was like, I don't, I don't think you heard me. I did bad today. I said, good. I said, now, I said, how else are they going to test how you handle when things go wrong? They can't bring 105,000 people into the practice field. So they got to they gotta simulate as much pressure as possible as if there was 105,000 people. Wow. Wow. And when you make a mistake, they don't care about the mistake. They just want to see how you handle it. Wow. So behind the scenes, no, see, nobody on the field has seen you make the mistake. Nobody on TV has seen you make the mistake. You're making mistakes behind the scene and you're, 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 you're being tested when nobody sees you. See, because the thing is, once they put you out on that field, once you are on your platform, that's it right there. So if you go out there and you're really not ready, you hustled your way out there, the last assessment of you is that fool that blew the game for us. Because they didn't know what they were doing. You might not never get back out there because they'll have a picture of, remember last time we put my hand on those, the last time, this dude lost his mind. See, that's the, that's the saddest thing to touch a dream or fall from. Very few people bounce back because they touched it. They tasted it. They were there and blew it. So you would rather sit back behind the scenes, get to the platform, and just keep building from there. Keep reproducing, helping somebody else build their dreams. Not to visit. You want to visit the dream? God hasn't designed a dream for a visitation. She designed a dream for you to live in it and for somebody else to learn from it and produce their dream. Only way you want to experience the heaven is to embrace all the preparation in the earth. And stop figuring out ways to get around it. As if 
us an option. I'll get to that. Really? And then you, you're frustrated because I'm not fulfilled because I can't do my dream and you ain't ready for it. <laughs> do the earthly preparation. Jesus sitting up there on the right hand of the Father because he passed all the earthly tests. Endure the, ice, the seasons of isolation. Everything is not, I'm not here to do my will, I'm here to will of the Father. I'm not here to do my will, I'm here to will of the Father. I'm not about me, I'm what the Father said, I'm just doing what the Father's will. Whatever the Father wants to do, do it. I'm not here to do me, no, don't focus on me, focus on the Father. It's the Father, 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 sitting on the right hand of all power. Gave us an example. But we panic and don't trust God. And we talked about in the earlier service, when we were talking about covenant, we were talking about believe the person that promised. Jesus believed the person that promised. He promised me this look crazy right now. If it, if it be your will, let it come past me. Nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. But now, if you want me to like abort this mission, remember what you did with Abraham when you gave him the ram in the bush? Now, there's some, uh, some type of person in the bush that's going to get up on that cross for me. I, I would take it. But if it's your will for me to get on the cross, I'll get on there. But now, if there's another option and you haven't shown me the baby switch yet, you can show it to me now. So he felt like we felt like, man, do I have to go to, do I have to do the whole thing? Endure all the pain and all the suffering? Do I have to take every strike for everything that they could possibly go through? Do I have to get the nails in my, in my hands and in my feet? Do I have to get bones broken? Man, you mean something I'm going to have to put on that thorn that's going to cut me? You're going to leave me. And then you're going to come back and resurrect. You want to me again? So I'm going to die and come back to life? Now that has not been done before. You, you, have you tested this thing? You got like a test dummy or something. Okay. You promise. That's all I need to hear. I know you enough that if you promise it, it'll come to back. Just promise me. I promise. Okay, I'm going. Is that enough for us? God promised. I'm telling you right now, he promised. He promised you would experience heaven on earth. If you just do your part. You have need of patience. After you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Hebrews 10, 36. You have need of cast down away your confidence for having great recompense of reward. Hebrews 10, 35. But you have need of patience. After you've done the work, you have need of patience. Sit back in covert and isolate in the hidden times. After you've done the will of God, you shall receive the promise. See, so I'm itching for the promise if I've done his will. If I haven't done his will, I'm not even like, no, I'm not, I'm cool. Actually, when people were talking to me about pastor, I was like, I'm cool. I, I, I still got some stuff, I ain't did. I'm like, I'm cool. It's like, no, but you can do that. It's like, I may can do it, but I ain't even did his will yet, so I ain't even, no, I'm good. But when it start getting closer, I said it. I talked to, I talked to the pastor. And I was like, I said, I don't know when it's going to happen. It could be three years from now, ten years from now. But I, I, I said it's closer. Because I sense now his will wasn't as, as much work for me. It had become a part of my life. There was a season when it was work. But sometimes I just didn't feel like doing his will. Sometimes I felt like, well, you know, I did his will for three weeks in a row. I had to take vacation this week, right? <laughs> Not knowing I was closer to the world than I was to him. So every time I took a break, it took me closer back. So I realized it had to be, I had to, I had to live by faith. The scripture says it just shall live by faith. Or Romans uh, 117. So it's a faith life. I got it now. Not faith moments. It pleases, uh, God faith is impossible to please God. A faith life. So I gotta, I gotta eat, sleep, drink, and breathe, faith. When I wake up, I'm looking through the lenses of faith all the time. Everything is faith, faith. So I, I don't just see in the natural realm. I see in the spirit realm. I don't look at things that I see because they're temporary. I put on my glasses and see the unseen and make decisions based on what he has, not based on what I have. When that becomes my autopilot, my way of life, I'm ready for the platform then. Because when the pressure comes at that high level, when it places a demand on me, I'm placing a demand on God. 